In this tutorial, I want to go through the reasoning behind wrapper div sections and how to handle them. So what we've got here is I've set up a new Dreamweaver site. I've created a new index.html page. I created a new style1.css style sheet and I linked the two together. At the moment, I don't have any rules in my style sheet, but what I do have is I've created four different div sections. Now, let's take a look at this in the code view. What has happened here is I've got an outside div section called an ID wrapper. So I've got the div section with an attribute ID equal to wrapper, and the end div tag of that is down here. So inside that div wrapper section, I've got three other div sections, and let's go through them one by one. The first one is a div with an ID attribute of navbar. The second one is a div with an ID attribute set to site content. And the third is a div section with an ID attribute set to main content. So each of those three different div sections are one after the other, but they are all inside the wrapper div. And that's why we call the wrapper div a wrapper, is that it wraps around what's inside it. Now, let's add some rules to some of these different sections. First of all, I'm going to handle the wrapper section. So I'm going to take my mouse, I'm going to click into that start div tag of that wrapper section, and I'm going to go over here to my CSS rules panel, and I'm going to click new CSS rule. The main thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to constrict the wrapper section uh, by a certain width and a certain height, and I'm going to change the background color to a certain color. So as soon as I clicked on that new CSS rule uh, icon, I get the new CSS rule box. Because I've got my mouse inside the uh, wrapper div start tag, I get a hashtag and wrapper, meaning that I'm about to add a rule onto that type of uh, uh, that type of element. So I click OK, and in in the CSS rule definition dialog box. The two things that I wanted to do with the, the dimensions was I wanted to change the width to a particular width. Let's say something that suits might be 900 pixels. And although I wouldn't usually do this, I'm going to put in a particular height as well. That will just let me show exactly what's happening in this wrapper div section a little bit more easily just in this tutorial. And I'm also going to change the background. The background color, I'm going to change to a very on the obvious gray. So I click OK on that, and you can see that my wrapper div section, I've got 900 pixels there, and it's gone a lot deeper as well by 1,000 pixels. Right, so that's the wrapper div section. That has been controlled, and the width and height has been changed. The background color has been changed. I'm going to start changing some of these inner div sections as well through CSS rules. So I'm going to take my mouse. I'm going to click in here into the start div tag of my navbar section, and I'm going to create a rule for that. The reason why I click into the div tag before I actually click on the new CSS rule icon is so that Dreamweaver can sense exactly what I want to put a rule on, and so it automatically pulls in the selector. So for instance, I had clicked my mouse into the start tag of the div section that had an ID equal to navbar, Dreamweaver realizes I probably want to put a rule on that, and it automatically brings in the selector for me. So I get hash wrapper hash navbar, meaning that the rule that I'm about to create here will only apply to any elements that have been identified as being of navbar type and that are within an element of wrapper types. This whole idea of compound selectors is dealt with in, an, in another video tutorial, so refer to that if you have any difficulties. So I'm going to click OK here. And again, I'm going to do a similar type of thing as I did with the wrapper section, but just think that this div section is within the wrapper section. So I'm going to click on the box category. Because this div section is within the wrapper section, really the width that I'm going to create here, I should really either have it at 900 pixels or less. But this navbar is going to stretch out across the whole entire top part of the uh, wrapper section. I'm going to give the width of 900 pixels, and I'm going to also give it a height of, we'll say, 150 pixels. And I'm going to change the background color to red. 
I'm happy with that. I click OK and let's see how it looks. So I can see that immediately that div section now changes. I get a red background. It gives me a height of 150 pixels and it's also given me a width of 900 pixels. So it fits very, very snugly right inside that wrapper. Next, I'm going to put a rule on the side content section. So again, I'm going to move this division here between my code and my design view. I'm going to take my mouse and click into the start tag of the div that has an ID equal to side content. And I'm going to go over here and click on my new CSS rule. It automatically creates the selector for me. So this rule is going to apply to any element that has got an ID of side content that is within the wrapper div section. Now click OK on that. And again, I'm going to play around with the same types of things here. I'm going to click on the box section. I'm going to put in a width. Now, I want this side content section to fit in perfectly over to the side of the wrapper beneath the nav bar. So if we think about the dimensions of the nav bar that I've, uh, I've set up, it was 150 pixels deep and it was 900 pixels wide. So in the height, let's say, of the side content, if I want this side content to take up the remainder of the height left over uh, after I've put in the nav bar, well, the nav bar was 150 pixels. The overall wrapper height was 1,000 pixels. So I think if I put in a height here of 850 pixels, then it should take up the rest of the space. The width-wise, I wanted to take up roughly a third of uh, what's in the wrapper already. So the wrapper is 900 pixels wide, so a third of that is 300 pixels. One other thing I'm going to set here is the float property because I want to fit in the main content section into the other side of this, uh, this side content section. So I'm going to drop down this float. I'm going to float this side content section to the left. I'm going to get into the background section then and change the background color to a nice bright color. So we can see what's happening there. I'm going to click OK on that. So we can see that that side content section now has a yellow background. It's 300 pixels wide. It's 850 pixels deep. And it's over to the left of the wrapper section in beneath the nav bar section. Now I'm going to handle the last section, which is the main content section. I'm going to take my cursor click into the main content div tag and I'm going to create a rule on that and again it draws in the right selector so this rule is going to apply to any element that has got an ID of main content within the wrapper div click OK and I'm going to change my box properties again with a height Again, of 850 pixels, because it's going to go right in beside the yellow uh, side content section. And so it's going to be the same height. And the width, well, I'm going to take over the rest of what's left over after I've slotted in the yellow side content section. And so that's two-thirds of what the width of the wrapper is, or 600 pixels. Again, I'm going to set the float property here. Now, in this instance, it doesn't actually matter too much whether I set this to left or right, as long as I set it. It's to s allow these div sections to float one another beside, uh, beside each other, so that it won't be in line, meaning that they won't push things out of the way. I have to set this float property. So I'm going to set it to left. And then I'll also change the background color to a very bright green. I'll click OK on that and again it should flow in very very snugly, very very tightly into the remaining space left on the wrapper section. So let's take a look at all of this in the browser so I get a good feel of what's going on. I'm going to uh, go to the preview in my favorite browser save everything and that's what it looks like so I've got this red nav bar up at the top 
that's 900 pixels wide, 150 pixels deep. I've got this yellow side content section, which is 300 pixels wide, 850 pixels deep. It's also floated to the left. Then I've got the main content section here, which is green. That is 600 pixels wide, 850 pixels deep. That is also floated to the left, meaning that it can float into the side of the yellow side content section. All in all, it all fits in perfectly inside the wrapper. I can't see any of the grey of the wrapper left because these three sections completely cover it. So I'll go back into Dreamweaver here. And I'm going to try one more thing. You may have noticed in the browser that the whole wrapper section was over to the left of the web page because we haven't said anything about margins. So this will show you how powerful wrapper sections can be. If I want to move that entire content section of this web page into the center of the browser, what I can do is I can now just make rules that apply to the wrapper section. So I'm going to get in here and I'm going to uh, I'm going to edit the rules for the wrapper ID and the main rules that I'm going to change here is I'm going to move into the box category and I'm going to set the margin here rather than put in an absolute value for any of the margins what I'm going to set is the margin to auto meaning that whatever web browser or whatever the window size is that the user actually views this web page through, that the margins will automatically adapt. So I get the same margin on the left as I do to the right of the wrapper section. That's OK on that rule. And again, let's save everything. And let's take a look at what it looks like in the browser. I'm going to press refresh. So that's what it was before. When I press refresh, now everything moves into the center of the web page and that's what wrappers are good for you can control the entire content of the web page because everything is inside the wrapper if I actually tweak rules to do with the wrapper it affects everything and so it gives me a huge amount of control about laying out my page and moving things around and it also keeps all the other sections like navbar side content and main content fixed one beside the other in a very kind of rigid way so that's the where, the why, and the how of wrapper sections in Dreamweaver and web pages.